Hey guys, Uber. hey, Fred, gang, thank you so very much for doing the event for us. Uh, the book is fun, it's how we got in the mess, how Obama did a series of things that made it worse. Uh, and that I think is the important thing between now and the election, because the other team is going to argue, oh, it would have been worse except for all the things we did. In point of fact, the list of things they did made it worse, and you can compare it with other countries, compare it with other recoveries. They can't make the case that they actually improve things. Uh, and then we end with, so what do we do next? And the short answer to that is making a list of all the things Obama, Reed, and Pelosi did, and don't do them. <laughs> um, but ac we actually put some interesting things together on how you make that stick, and that's, that's kind of interesting. So I'm encouraged, and the good news is not only that I think we'll end up with a Republican House, Senate, and President uh, next year, which can begin to reverse this, but we also have in the 50 states some real opportunities because in the 50 states there are 24 states where the Republicans have the governorship in both <coughs> houses. So in those 24 states, if the Republicans have their act together, they can do any good thing they want. 24 states. Doesn't mean they all will, but some of them will. In 11 states, the Democrats have governorship in both houses, so they can turn those states into Greece, France, or California um, as, <laughs> as, as rapidly as they want to. Uh, and so we're going to see a division in the country over the next decade between the Republican states, the 24 states with Republican control, plus the five states with Republican legislatures but not yet a governor, and the 11 states that, that are completely Democrat, plus the three states the Democrat legislatures control. And over 10 years, because they all redistrict themselves to keep themselves in power, Illinois and California will remain Democratic, and Ohio and Indiana and Pennsylvania are going to maintain themselves as Republican, <coughs> even Wisconsin <coughs> and Michigan. And for 10 years, you're going to see tort reform and tax lowering and spending differences uh, and school choice and the country is going to divide very dramatically and of course people will move so for 10 years we're going to see people moving from California and from New York into those states that do it better uh, which is a really good competition of ideas as to I mean if the United States does something if the federal government does something stupid people don't move to France no matter how stupid it is however when New York and Massachusetts and Illinois and California do something silly, people will um, learn a new language and move to Texas um, and, and, and you know, to look for work and have better opportunities. So there, there really is a, a competition between the 50 states and unlike gridlock in Washington when the two parties don't get along, what we have in the 50 states is the opposite of gridlock which is a sorting out people who agree with each other in Kansas are doing interesting things people who agree with each other in Illinois are doing interesting and destructive things. Uh, and <laughs> that's going to continue to move in, in opposite directions on a whole series of issues. Some of the ones, Wally, that you write about on tort reform, moving in different directions, labor law moving in different directions, taxes, spending, uh, all of those kind of things. And as a result, there'll be more electoral votes for good guys and fewer electoral votes for bad guys at the end of 10 years. Um, I think we have some real opportunities and uh, hopefully the book will help with the election this year, but also with how we govern in future years. And with that, love to sign some books and say hi. Oh, we taking questions? Sure. Can I? Yeah. Okay, yes. my one question would be, since this sloshing around of money through stimulus, through political money laundering, right. through yeah. political money laundering, basically, mm -hmm. to set them up to, uh, to try and maintain incumbency, um, obviously this is destructive. So what do you think are our chances of actually cutting the government from... Cutting spending. Well, you know, uh, if you look back at the 2008 campaign, just read the transcripts from the second and third presidential debate where Obama argued, he promised that he was going to cut the net size of government. The government was going to be smaller at the end of an Obama administration than it was going to be uh, otherwise. And, uh, and he blamed Bush for having such a big growth in government and said that the big growth in government was responsible for the deficits which he claimed were too huge at the time and that that was responsible for uh, the problems. And in fact, he was making, he made it very clear in those things. He said, I've been consistently making this promise throughout the campaign. And indeed, he kept on making that same pledge right up until Election Day. Within a week after Election Day, he was promising this stimulus, this $500 billion stimulus that came out of no place. 
and then within two weeks it was up to 750 billion. So, you know, if you just take him at his word, plus even the stimulus, he claimed it was just going to be temporary spending. You know, two years in and out, it's permanent now. And so, you know, you know, he was arguing himself, if you believe his rhetoric, that government was too big back in 2008. And if you were to go and cut spending back to where it was in 2007, you would eliminate the deficit that we have right now. Yes. Uh, Grover and John, great presentation. Um, the, both of you mentioned, you know, you mentioned Grover at, at the end, and, and you mentioned, you know, when we, about people getting in their cars on Friday and going on Monday, people, the ability of people to move where the jobs are. But it seems like one of the most destructive policies of this administration, which unfortunately some Republicans have gone along with, is that we have these programs to basically, uh, through mortgage modification, other things, the Attorney General's, to pay people to stay put, to pay people not to move where the jobs are, to, you know, keep people in their homes as politicians as like they say when really if you were if you wanted to subsidize something you should be and to make people better off you should be subsidizing people right. moving to North Dakota and things like that so how destructive are these programs you know to avoid you know the inevitable foreclosure in keeping people instead of you know saying you know having policies go west young man to stay where you to stay where you are as long as you can the answer is very right. very destructive yeah. and they're deliberately destructive yeah. but the other team is not stupid they're evil yeah. Look, look, there are two issues here. One is, you know, you look at the unemployment insurance payments. Well, you're unemployed, not only you get those, but you get health care, 80 percent, and you also can get mortgage payments that are covered. You know, if you were to, but you only get that as long as you're living in your home. You know, maybe in past recessions you would rent out the home or try to sell it if you couldn't do it. But if you do that now, if you rent out your home and move into a small apartment, then you lose the subsidy. So essentially you're financially penalized to do financially responsible When do they make that change? They made it in the stimulus. Really? Yeah. And so they didn't have the mortgage payments before. This, that, and the health care stuff for unemployed is new. That was all in the stimulus. But there's a second issue here, and that is, uh, you mentioned the foreclosures. You know, Obama thinks that he's helping out people by delaying foreclosures. Uh, and if you look from 2008 on, he's been constantly talking about the fact that, you know, he wants to have policies that will force banks to reduce the principal that people have on their loans, you know, making it easy. You know, if that made sense, they do it on their own. If you're, if you're a mortgage lender, though, and the president gets you to make this deal that they just made him do about a month or so ago or been threatening to do over these years, what does that do to your incentive to go and make loans? Okay, if you think I make a loan in six months or a year from now, the government's going to come in and forcibly reduce the principal that you're owed by 50000 that's a huge loss. And so if you are worried about making loans, what happens to people's ability to go and buy houses? They're not going to be buying the houses as much. And if people aren't buying the houses as much, what's going to happen to the price of houses? And so it's not surprising to me that with this type of rhetoric, along with financial regulations we can talk in this area, that you're making it so, you know, it's not surprising that the price of housing, you look at the Case-Shiller Index, has continued to fall. It's fallen the last five months straight. We're still at the nadir. We probably haven't hit that yet. And, you know, we're three years into the administration right now. And it's these types of things, these short-run things to make other people pay for Obama's altruism, to make the financial markets and mortgage lenders pay for his gift that he wants to give out. If he really wants to help them out, then make the case that people generally should have to pay for this rather than forcing it on just one small sector of the economy. Can, 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 uh, make this the last formal question. I'm sure there are lots of informal Sorry, questions in this question afterwards. But host privilege. I'm going to sign but, but one thing I think, and your book makes a clear point, and, and Grover re illustrated in your diagrams there too, the division increasingly, the red state, blue state division is not just a political division, it's an economic policy division. One of the things, and of course we saw to some extent that in Europe too, between the industrious states that actually tried to make reforms, Germany, Scandinavia, and the southern states which the grasshopper and the ant societies, we're going to see that in the United States. How do you see us avoiding the, 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 uh, the red states having to bail out, uh, blue states having to bail out a red state or vice versa? Uh, well, we're going to see that. Yeah. In our, Step one was a Republican House. Yeah. Without a Republican House, they would have nationalized all of these challenges. The biggest mistake that the Obama administration and Reed and Pelosi made was what they should have done is nationalized the pension liabilities. Because that would they could have backed it 
nobody would have seen it happening. It would have, it, Arnold Schwarzenegger would have flown to D.C. and stood next to the president and thanked him as he did it. And then all of a sudden, the potentially red states would have been locked <laughs> into paying for the profligacy of the blue, blue states. states' pensions and their health care benefits. Right. Sure. And it would have killed the ability of states to compete right. with each other. Um, they, they screwed up. They didn't do that. They went for this health care thing. They went with the yeah. stimulus. They went a number of other things. Much wiser would have been uh, to have nationalized the indebtedness of the unfunded liabilities. But they didn't. And here's the good news. Uh, Utah passed a law. All new hires for local cops, teachers, government workers, state, local, and Utah, um, starting July 1st of last year, have a defined contribution pension. Right. Okay. Here's your pay. Here's 10% of your pay in a 401k. And we're cool. Okay. You want to stick around for a year? You want to stick around for 30 years? We don't care. But, but there's no surprises for you, and there are no surprises for taxpayers. Do you think Utah senators or congressmen would ever sign on to bailing out California? And a number of states are moving in that direction more slowly than, than Utah, which has done it exactly right. But having done that, having bought ourselves time with the Republican House, I don't think that they can use the federal government to completely end interstate competition, and that's why they're going to lose. They screwed up. They had us by the throat, and they missed.